Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. We got a great one for you today. With Divi 4, we created a bunch of sections that you could pop up from buttons and things like that. We had to add a bit of JavaScript code and CSS. We've got Divi 5 going on here and I'm doing the same thing, but we've got absolutely no coding whatsoever. I've got three little buttons here. They're actually little blurb modules I've made into buttons. If I click on the first one, it's going to show section one. Basically a hidden section. You can have any content you want there. And if we hit it again, it'll toggle it off. But we can also do that with other sections, like a services section or something like that. And again, number three could be a contact form or a gallery. Really easy. And like I say, the fantastic thing about this is we do not have to add any JavaScript or CSS to make this work. And you can have them all open. If I just hit section one, it'll pop up on top. Section two, section two, section three. Really nice little feature, really impressive. I'll take you through how to actually do this all today. It's really easy. Like I say, no coding. So let's get started. I've got this page open. I'm going to go down and undo everything I've done. OK, I've undone everything here. So we just got three little buttons made out of blurb modules. Here's the first section, second section and third section. And each of these sections, if I go into this one, I've given an admin la label. This is quite important for finding things when you want to add your interactions. So you can call it what you like, but I would suggest you give anything that you're going to hide and show a name so you find it easier. And I'll show you why in a moment. Great. So this is just a regular page. Now you may ask why I've actually used blurb modules instead of buttons. You can do this with buttons, but the only trouble with buttons is it's going to refresh the page so it doesn't work. For anybody that doesn't know what I've done here, let's start from scratch. I'm going to delete this little blurb module. I'm going to add a new one. Like I say, you can use a regular text module for this if you want to, to keep it simple. I just thought I'd add the blurb with a little icon there. And we'll say section one or whatever you want to call yours, contact form, whatever you're popping up. Don't want any content in there. I'm going to use an icon instead of an image. Pop down and use an icon. I use that little double arrow to the right there. I'm not going to put any link in there. Background wise, I'm going to make it that default blue. That icon's going to disappear because that's the same color. Now, if we pop over to design, image and icon, icon, we're going to have that white. I think I made it about 25 pixels. I actually want it on the left hand side. Fine. Yeah, let's go for 25. I think that's what I used before. Yeah, that looks pretty similar. And we can adjust that text, bring it down a little bit so it's more in line. That's a heading text, remember? We use our heading back here. So if we go to design and heading text, or title text, I should say then. Again, I'm going to make it white so we can see it nicely. Text size is fine. I just want to bring it down a little bit. To do that, I'm going to use line height. I'm just going to increment down a little bit. That's almost there. It's something like that. When it looks right to you, that's fine. Then we can use a bit of spacing and sizing to make it the shape that we want it. So if we close up title text or just roll on down. Spacing wise, I'm going to get perhaps 15 pixels padding on the left. So if we go down here, padding left, 15, just hit enter. It's got pixels by default. Let's add maybe 10 to the top. See what we've got going on here. I think that's pretty much how we had it. And then width wise, I gave it a fixed width. Let's just go into this one. I think it's about 150, possibly 200 pixels in sizing. 180 pixels. We made it. Let's go back in here. Design sizing. 180 pixels. Width. 180. Zero. Put, put the PX on at the end. Otherwise, it'll try and put in a percentage there, which will not work. Great. That's pretty much how we want it. But I do want it in the middle. And we can just go down to alignment, pop it in the middle. Great. So we've got the basis of our buttons here. Remember, there's no links on any of these. Now, what do we want to do? Well, when the page loads, I don't want to see section one. 
section two or section three. I only want to pop those up when they click on these. So the first thing we've got to do is work on our sections. And like I say, each of these sections, if I go in it, I've given it an admin label, S1, S2, funnily enough, and S3, just so we can find them a lot easier. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, you will do in a second. So what we need to do is pay is hide these sections on page load. So we're in section one here. I'm going to go over to advanced. This is where you'll find the new interactions tab right here on the right hand side under conditions. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to add an interaction. I want to tell it that on page load, so I'm going to go down to load. I want this particular thing to be hidden. So I'm going to say on page load hide element. Now, which element do we want to hide? It's this one that we called S1. So if we click on target module, it's going to show us the whole page in a tree like this. You might think, well, I've got to go through section one, blah, 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 blah. But because I put them admin labels in there, you can see it says S1, S2. It just makes it a lot easier to find. So just bear that in mind when you're working with these interactions. So I want to hide section one. When I click on this and save it, it should disappear. Fantastic. We're on section two. We want to do exactly the same thing with section two. Advanced interactions. Add an interaction on page load. We want to hide it. Which one is it? It's S2, this one. There we are, S2. We'll save that one. I'm going to go into the third one. You know exactly what I'm going to do here. Now, for full transparency here, with this new interactions feature, when I've saved it, sometimes it doesn't save the actual module you're targeting. So if you're having problems, check that first. So I want to hide this one on page load. Target module, occasionally, for some reason, when you save, it doesn't save it and you have to go in and redo it. We're on the alpha version still of Divi 5 here. So that may be a little bit they need to iron out, but I'm sure they will. So we'll save this one. It should disappear also. Fan. Fantastic. Now, to enable these buttons to bring these sections back, and like I say, I've kept mine very boring, section one, two, three. It could be about us, contact form, or contact form two, contact form, whatever you want to pop up on yours. So we need to go into our first one here. You know what we're going to do. We're going to go advance and interactions. We're going to add an interaction for this one. What do we want it to do? When we click on it, I want it to toggle the visibility of a section. Now, if it's visible and we click on it, it's going to disappear. If it's invisible and we click on it, it's going to appear. So that works great. Target module, section one. So this is going to be S1. Oops. Perfect. Save. And here's an example that S3 should still be invisible on this back end. What I think's happened, and we'll check that, we'll go in there. I think it's forgotten my little interaction there. Let's go in there. It's changed it from toggle visibility, unless I did that by mistake just now. I actually want to hide that element. Great. So we've done the interaction for section one. We want to do the same thing for section two to bring up section two. Advanced interactions on click toggle visibility is fine we want to go through and this is s2 we're looking for section two or whatever you've called yours obviously and exactly the same for number three advanced interactions add an interaction when we click on it what do we want to do toggle visibility is fine number three s3 should be down here there we go Great, once we've done that, it's looking good on the back end here. Let's save our changes now, save draft. And we'll preview. And here we have it. As you can see, or as you can't see, because they're not there, those sections aren't there. Here's our buttons. Section one. Popped up section one. Section two should add it below section one there. Perfect. Section three, you know what that's going to do. And like I say, 
We toggle them all back off. Doesn't matter what order you do it in. If you want section two to pop up, bunk. If you want section three to pop up, bunk. Really handy. Now, the reason I didn't use buttons for this is because when you click on those buttons, you need to put a link in and what's going to happen is it's going to take you back to the top of the page even if you put a hashtag in somebody suggested this and it'll work if you've got your buttons at the top of the page but it's always going to scroll back to the top of the page if you're using those and that's why i use these little blurb modules now if you wanted to you could add another interaction that when you clicked on it it would actually scroll down to that section so it would be like that for anybody that's interested let's just do that quickly you can have multiple interactions on each button. So if we go back in here, button one. Well, let's say let's work on button three. It really doesn't matter. That section has appeared because I've just clicked on it. We're on the button or the blurb module that we're using for the button. Advanced add interaction. On click, not only is it going to toggle the visibility, but we want to scroll to element. Which element do we want to go to? Number three again. So let's try that. I didn't actually try this earlier, but it is an option. So I thought I'd explore it with you. Okay, well, let's save that now and see what we've got. Preview. Okay, so one is just going to open one. Two is going to open two. I'm going to leave that open. This one should open section three below two and it should scroll down to it. Let's see what happens. There we have it. Looks like we could put an offset off there. It scrolled to right at the top there. But you get the idea. And we can close it. Close section two. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, we just need to give it a bit of an offset. And that's fantastic. But that's just another little option for you. I was happy with the way it was. Let's just take that little interaction away. Just wanted to prove to you, you can add multiple interactions to make all kind of crazy things happen. We'll resave. And we'll re-preview. I love the quickness of this thing too. Fantastic. So there we have it, guys. We've created some buttons using blurbs. If anybody comes across a way to do with a regular button that doesn't go to the top of the page, then please let me know. Section one, section two, section three. And of course you can have them all or none of them. So there we go, guys. I really do think that's a fantastic feature that they've added. Like I say, we were doing this with Divi 4, but we had to add some JavaScript and some CSS to actually make this work. And it worked absolutely flawlessly, but here it is without code. Really impressed. So there we go, guys. There's another little look at the interactions feature that they've added to Divi 5. We'll be doing a lot more with this as we go along. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video just like this one. And as I keep mentioning, as we get closer and closer to full release date, Divi 5 is great for building from scratch, but I will not be adding it or migrating my client site from 4 to 5 for a little while. But if you want to build new sites with it, it seems to work fine. But do just bear in mind it's in the alpha version. So if anybody's got any questions about Divi 4 that they'd like me to cover, as I'm not going to be covering too much of it now, just let me know down below. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.